Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, glad you're here today. Go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will. The first chapter of the book of John, the Gospel of John. Hallelujah. Don't forget our Wednesday night series on the life and teachings of Paul. Uh, Paul is over in Corinth writing to the church at Rome. We've gotten, I think, through into the third chapter, maybe. And maybe still in the second chapter. Yeah, I am in the second chapter. So Romans is full of stuff, good stuff. <clears throat> Let's uh, start with verse 1 of John's Gospel. First chapter, in the beginning was the Word. And then that word, the word here is Logos. Now the difference between Logos and Rhema, uh, Logos is the full embodiment. Rhema is a, a, a revealed part, a spoken part. Okay? So the Rhema of God will be a revealed spoken part of the word. The Logos is the full encompassment of all, or the full body of the word. So in the beginning was the Logos. The Logos was with God and the Logos was God. Now, you know, only cult churches have changed that. They changed their preposition there, make it a God. Now that Jesus is God. Um, the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. In Him was life. Zoe. And the life, this, this is interesting to me, was the light of men. The life of God is the light of men. His life produces illumination in us. His life produces revelation in us. Amen? And so today we're going to talk about and begin ministry along the lines of maybe a one sermon. You know, I just never know when I get started sometimes if it's going to be a one sermon or a 21 sermon. Just depends on how the Holy Ghost takes and builds on it. And uh, so we're going to talk about the life of God. Everybody say the life of God. The life of God. Hallelujah. The Zoe... Uh, is used in the New Testament of life as a principle, life in the absolute sense, life as God has it, that which the Father has in himself, and which he gave to the incarnate Son to have in himself, and which the Son manifested in the world. We see the life of God in manifestation when the storm came. We see the life of God in manifestation when it came in contact with sickness and disease. We see the life of God manifested when it came in contact with poverty. That life is what God is and has. Amen? And then He manifested it in there. When Jesus walked on water, glory to God, the life of God, I'm telling you that life supersedes the laws of nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For this life, from this life, man became alienated in the consequence of the fall of the garden. And this life man became partakers of through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who becomes its author, that is Jesus, to all such as trust in him, and who is therefore said to be the life of the believer. For the life that he gives, he maintains. Eternal life is the present, actual possession of the believer because of his relationship with Christ. Let me say something. If you violate, renounce, reject, disconnect that relationship with Christ, you can disconnect yourself from the eternal life. The life is eternal. And as long as you're associated with it, it's eternal. And you, Amen. you disassociate. See, now, now think about this. Let me finish reading this. I'm sorry. And that, and that it will one day extend its domain to the sphere of the body as assured by the resurrection of Christ. This life is not merely a principle of power and mobility, however, for it has moral associations which are inseparable from it. As of holiness and righteousness, 
death and sin, life and holiness are frequently contrasted in Scripture. And uh, we can go, well, death came through sin, which is rebellion against God. Sin thus involved the forfeiting, forfeiting of this life. The life of the flesh is in the blood, therefore the impartation of life to the sinner must be by a death caused by the shedding of that element which is the life of the flesh, that is blood. It is the blood that makes atonement for the reason of life. The separation from God caused by the forfeiting, for, forfeiting, forfeiture, how about that, I'll just use that, so, forfeiting of the life could be removed only by a sacrifice in which the victim and the offerer became identified. Powerful word in the New Testament, or concept or theological teaching, identification. That which was appointed in typical office in Israel received its full accomplishment in the voluntary sacrifice of Christ. The shedding of the blood of the language of Scripture involves a taking or giving of the life. Since Christ has no sins of his own to die for, his death was voluntary and vicarious. In his sacrifice, he endured divine judgment to man's sin. By this means, the believer becomes identified with him in his deathless life. Through his resurrection, enjoys the conscious and eternal fellowship with God. Vines expository dictionary on the word of life, Zoe. The life of God has come to in, in dwell the believer. We are to pass from death unto life. We know we've passed from death. And I got a bunch of scriptures. We'll go start. We'll read through some. But when we know we've passed from death, spiritual death, unto life, because we love the brother. Well, remember, God is love. The love of God has been shed upon our heart by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the nature of God's life in us is demonstrated by our love for the brethren. Amen. Maybe how many people in church don't love each other? That means you're carnal. Amen. That would never be. You got you got to walk in love with people. Amen. And you understand that, that pastors sometimes have to do things that is, that, that is this disciplinary and love for the flock and love for the whole and even in the fact of disciplining one person that is still the love of God. But it's, it's not because they dis dislike them or hate them. You don't want to see anybody go to hell. Amen. And we talked about this Wednesday, so we're not going to recover the ground. But, you know, things are earth, things that have to be done in the church for the sake of the person that is love, not, not, it may not be joyful, but it's still, it's still love. Remember, who the Lord chasteneth not. If the Lord chasteneth you not, then you're bastards indeed. That's what the scripture says. You're illegitimate. Yeah. If you're not chastened of the Lord when you're doing wrong. Yeah. I know, you know, the new hot teaching is, that, you know, if, if you, I, I actually misquoted this. I, I got the right quote. That any American preacher that said God judges individuals and nations is sick. Mm. That's what this, the, the highest, newest, latest preacher on the scene from overseas taught in the one of the largest churches in America. If American preachers say that you know God judges the individuals and nations, they're sick. Well, there's no scripture for what he said. You know, God loves people. Amen. Amen. And God wants people to live out the life that's in them and not live according to the dictates of their flesh. Amen. Did you know uh, the scripture says this for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil? Well, what would be the works of the devil? Well, go look, you know, remember Paul wrote to the church in Galatia, in Galatia and said in the book of Galatians, for the works of the flesh are these. Look over Galatians chapter 5. See, this is where the life of God's come to eradicate. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. The life of God's come to eradicate what Satan did in humanity. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 18, but if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are, the, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, revelings, and such like. Now, let me say this. What does such like do? It covers everything else that wasn't listed there that's sinful. Okay? Um... Of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The, now, now, the word of God says this, for the, the, the Jesus was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, the works of the flesh are manifestations of the works of the devil. Right. Because until the fall of man, we didn't have adultery, envies, murders, and all these kind of things. 
They all became works of the devil. And so the works of the flesh are a representation of the works of the devil. And Jesus came to destroy those things. He did not come to impart his life into you so you can continue in that lifestyle. He came to deliver you from it through the life of God that's in him. Now the fruit of the Spirit is, okay, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, if Jesus came, Jesus said he, in Him was light, and the light was the light of men. Then we, we have come to, and the purpose of Jesus coming is so we can inherit or receive that light. You go on to the third chapter of the Gospel of John, and down there, you know, he said in John 3, 16, one of the most famous scriptures ever quoted in the history of, of humanity, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Yeah. Everlasting life, the Zoe of God. Yeah. God wants his life in us so that it can work in us and eradicate the works of the devil. Amen. It did, the, see, when we teach that grace allows us to do whatever and it doesn't matter because we're under grace, we're, we're wrong. See, you, God, you cannot, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound, the rhetorical answer, God forbid. That's what Paul wrote in Romans. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound, God forbid. Why? Because there's a life in you. See, when, you, when you're trying to say that I could live in this sin, and have the life of God in me, and it's, it's, it's irrelevant, I'm still going to heaven, yada, yada, yada. You are now setting a dichotomy in you that are working against each other. Remember this, the, 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 the mind is enmity against the things of God. and cannot be subject to the law of God, uh, uh, neither indeed can be. It's not subject to the law of God, it cannot be. You have to renew your mind to the Word. The life of God came in to, to infuse us to destroy the works of the devil and that now Ephesians the second chapter says for you were created in Christ Jesus unto good works where does that come from it comes from the life of God and him was life and the life was the light of men that life working in us but then say this you have to allow that light to work in you and obey it and do it. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. You have to allow that light to function and manifest. Put off the old man and put on the new man. Paul wrote. He says, put off the old man. I believe in the book of Colossians. And put on the new man. He didn't say that God's going to rip it off and stick him in. He said, you put it off, put on. Right, is anybody here today? How many are thinking you wish you were home in bed because it's raining outside? Don't you raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the backhand of the iPad. All right. <clears throat> Dr. Thompson called the backhand of the anointing from pastor is going to be the backhand of the iPad. Don't break your iPad. Yeah, it won't mess with the iPad, but it'll mess with your head. Hallelujah. John 5, 29 says, They shall go forth that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Hallelujah. Labor, John 6, 27, Labor not for the meat which perishes, but that which meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the Father, God the Father's seal. John 6, 33, the bread of God, in which he is coming down from heaven and giveth life to the world. <coughs> Two verses down, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6, 40, this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. We, we can go on, there's, there's tons of scriptures along these lines. God sent Jesus because man had become alienated from his life. See, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam committed high treason, death passed on him, and the scripture said death passed from Adam on. Jesus came to restore that life, to restore that life, 
to restore the destruction of the works of the devil in people's lives. The destruction not of their lives, but the destruction of the works of the devil from their life. We have been called to righteousness and holiness. Amen. Amen. The life of God in us. Yeah, you know, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and, uh, and, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What will your flesh do? Your flesh is messed up. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Your flesh is messed up. So is mine. You just got to keep it under. Now I've got a beagle. Love my beagle. My beagle repents when she gets caught. And only when she gets caught. Hello. And she's gotten older and smart. You'll come down the steps and she'll be over in her bed with this look on her face like, what? <laughs> and you go by the trash can, there's butters, wrappers out here, there's all kinds of stuff up there. Maddie Ray! And she'll just slip right on that steps. <laughs> <laughs> She's not repentant. Uh-huh. You can... He said, get away from that trash can. She'll walk around. And if you walk out, she'll walk right back over there. <laughs> and your flesh is, see, that's, just a, that's just a picture of the flesh. She's willing to pay the price to satisfy the desires of her flesh. <laughs> you can beat the ever-living daylights out of her. And tomorrow, she'll be right back over there. <laughs> Paul said, you know, you had to buffet your body. You had to keep it under Amen. That's a daily process. Did you know that? Yes, and see, you, you've got to give, you've got to keep living out of that life in you, and uh, and letting that life in you work as you as you walk this process out of putting your flesh under, renewing your mind, and living out of your spirit. They that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, how are you going to live out of the spirit of God? The life of God's in you. It's the light of men. That, that the ability to see from the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He that loves us is. Uh, this, his life shall lose it. He that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. John 12, 25. Uh, amen. 12, 50. And I know that this his command is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said, so I speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We know we've passed from death and life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides to death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murder has eternal life abiding in him. Amen. 1 John 5, 11 to 13 and 20. And this is the record that God has given to us. Eternal life and this life is in his son. Where we're going to get the life from Jesus, you don't get it from anywhere else. All right? He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. We have to understand that there is a life at work in us desiring to bring us into a place where there's a manifestation of that life in every arena. Okay. Now let me say this. The word eternal, I, I believe, when you study scripture, refers to the, the, the it's, a, it's an adjective of the type of life that it is, not necessarily um, your position in it. Let me say, let me, let me bring clarity to that. There are people who believe in eternal security. You can't ever lose your salvation. We got scriptures that, that, that disqualify that. Hebrews 11, I mean, Hebrews 6, really, verse, six verses, just obliterates that. Okay. Um, you are eternally secure as long as you're connected to the eternally secure one yeah. or the one who give, gives you the eternal security amen you renounce his lordship and I, I, just, I know somebody that has I, 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 I mean I knew them before they got saved after they got saved filled with the spirit spoke in tongues prophesied walked in the things of God walked in deep places with God walked in the spirit and then somewhere down the road, now they, they, they spit at uh, their, their former spouse and say, I spit in the face of your God. Was, wrote a blog one time, put on the internet. 
you know, about Jesus' blood. Was daddy so mad that he had to kill his son and you know, just mocked the blood of Jesus? And this is the person born again, filled with the Spirit, prophesied, walked in the deep places of God, knew the things of God, lived in the world for, for years, gave over to their flesh. So they gave over to their flesh. So you spit in the face of God. You, you count the blood of the covenant wherewith you were sanctified an unholy thing and track around your foot the blood of the Son of God. There remains no more sacrifice for your sin. Everybody say, wow. wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Say it upside down, wow. Mom. <laughs> so the jury's going to tell this is too boring. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I get people saying stuff. Jesus came to a degenerate, lost, rebellious people. And I'm talking about the Jews. I'm not even talking about the heathens. He came to the Jews first. He came, he came to the lost sheep of the house, house of Israel. It wasn't until the Jews rejected Peter's preaching that he went to the Gentiles with the message. The Gentiles were not in the church until you know, maybe a decade or so after the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus came to a, a hardened, backslid people to preach his message to. And bring them the life of God to deliver them from their sin, to deliver them from their rebellion against God, to deliver them from their hand. Their, remember the wall of partition, the veil on them. He came to redeem them with his own blood, glory to God, to bring them back into the fold. Amen. Now, don't, don't get so excited if you're a Gentile. Well, we got something the Jews on hand. The Bible says if God can graft in a wild olive branch, he can graft in the natural olive branch. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He's going, he's going to. So, so if you're a Christian and you hate Jews, um, <laughs> you're just stupid. Don't be stupid. We have a promise of eternal life in Jesus Christ. That life has come to work in us. The Zoe life of God. Now, so we, we, we find the church are people in, in, in states of lost. They're, they're not living out of their spirits. They're living out of their flesh. There are people, you know, but, but the life of God is there to work a purpose in us. It's not going to work it if you don't get involved. You've got to get involved in the working of the work. What do you mean? You've got to make a choice to live out of that life. To let that life rule in you and let that life reign in you. Amen. You know, the life is there, but if you don't, if you don't release it, if you don't live according to what it's be giving you light to do. Remember, him was life, and the life was the light of men. Yeah. If you don't let that life produce light, and you walk in accordance with it, you won't reap the benefits of it. Amen. Amen. I remember E.W. Kenyon saying a number of years ago in one of his books that Christians who don't renew their mind to the Word of God will imitate sinners. What happens when you're, when you're meditating the Word? The life, which is the light, will bring illumination to it. That's the Holy Spirit working in you. The teacher. He'll shed light. Revelation. Light, light is often symbolic of revelation. Or seeing. Understanding. Yes. Not carnal understanding, but spiritual understanding. Uh, saw something really interesting on... Um, friend of mine on Facebook and see he made a statement that they had a real spiritual application. I want to read it to you so they find it. If he hadn't posted 65 this morning, he posts so many sometimes you can't keep up with it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Where is it? No, 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 no. That was a different person. Oh my. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was John Nuzo. Y'all remember John, don't you? Are you kidding me? Come on. Oh, here we go. Noah had no training in building anything. But he built the ark. The Titanic was built by engineers. 
Amen. Amen. Exactly. So don't discount the wisdom of God over the wisdom of this world. Amen. The Titanic sank. Yes. The ark did. The Titanic sank on its maiden voyage. Well, yeah, it didn't make it to us. It didn't make it to its destination. I was, I was really trying to. I had not planned on using that, so maybe I can go to the guy he quoted because I, I know him. Yeah, here we go. The art was built by an amateur. Titanic was built by professionals. It's better to obey God than to listen to your critics. Amen. Amen. See, there's a life in you that makes you wiser than your years. Yeah. That makes you wiser than your teaching. Makes you wiser than your training. Makes you wiser than anything. It's the life of God. See, God has come to dwell us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I and my Father will come in and sup with him and make our abode with him. On the inside of you right now today is the life of God to give you wisdom, to give you direction, to give you understanding, to empower you, to lift you up, to cause you to go over, to be the head, not the tail above, only not beneath. It's called the life of God. It's resurrection life. Amen. It's raising life. Amen. It's empowering life. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Amen. And that life is the light of men. Right. <coughs> glory to somebody. Sorry, say glory. glory. That's what God wants us to have. Where it can take an amateur and build the greatest sailing vessel of history. Amen. Amen. Where it can take you and your, all the shortcomings you have as an individual and make you the greatest. Hallelujah. Amen. Can make you the boss. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, Air Force One was on last night. We kind of got in the middle of it. And, and the lady on the plane said, you know, they said, we don't have, they blocked all of our communication. She said, well, not so, Mr. President. You know, the fax machine works on a different protocol, da 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 And so they faxed him. He says, now, if this works, you're the postmaster general. <laughs> Not sure she was qualified to be postmaster, but it didn't matter. She was going to get elevated. God will elevate you. Amen. Amen. God can elevate you. He can take where you are and elevate you out of that place. And that's what the life of God is. It is resurrection life. Don't sell yourself short. Don't pull yourself up and say, I can't do this. No, stop with the I can't and you know and I, I just don't know about and let the life of God take you there. It's greater than your circumstance. And where is it? It's in you. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That life is in you. It's resurrection. What a raising life. Hallelujah. It raises you up out of death. I told Satan the other week, he said, you're not getting our ministry. Amen. You're not shutting us down. Amen. You're not getting my house. You tried it 15 years ago. You ain't getting it now either. Amen. I had to have a talk with him. Glory to God. Fifteen years ago, I had to holler at him and say, you're not getting my house. Amen. So I told him the other day, you're not getting the ministry. You're not getting the house. Amen. You're not getting anything. Amen. I had to have a talk with him. Amen. And you're taking notes. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're done for, punk. Glory to God. We're, gonna, we're fulfilling our call. Yes. We're fulfilling our destiny. We're going to do what God called us to do. Amen. It don't look like it. I know. You ain't telling me something I don't know. Right. It don't look like it. Amen. While we look not yeah. at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, subject to change, yeah. but the things which are not seen are eternal. Glory to God. So you ain't telling me nothing about what I'm looking at. I know what I'm looking at. But it's temporal. Yeah. We're being subject to change. Yes. 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 But the things which are not seen are eternal. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So I had to talk to the devil. Why are you talking to God? Because he already did. He told me what to do. I went and talked to the devil. So he thinks if he gets to church, he gets my house. He's at my house. He didn't want me to have that house to start with. I had to fight him in the U-Haul truck. 
I mean, running back and forth, moving in a hurricane. I'll never forget the day. We're halfway moved out. I mean, we're halfway moved. I think we're about to be down about the last load out of the old house, taking it over to the new. And, and Janie's in the house and get a phone call. It's Janelle Spencer. Yeah. Janelle says, Janie, are you sitting down? She said, why? She said, sit down. She said, we got a problem. Janie said, what? They won't fund the purchaser's loan. That's people buying our house. See, we, we couldn't buy the new house unless these people bought our old house. <coughs> we gone to closing, all the paperwork was signed, had gotten the keys to the new house, given the other people, that they were gonna take it, they, they would give us a day, that's part of our contract, give us a day to get out. They're, 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 they're sitting there waiting for us to get out so they can move in and I get a phone call. They won't fund the loan for them. They pulled a credit report after closing and found something on, on their stuff. Uh-huh. So I'm in the U-Haul truck. Janie calls me on my cell phone. She says, honey. Da -da -da. I said, what? She said, blah, blah, blah. She goes and tells me, and I'm, I'm beating the steering wheel of the U-Haul. Devil! You're not getting my house. It's my house in Jesus' name. It's my house. Where'd that come from? It came out of the life of God. Yes. Amen. <coughs> Amen. See, he'll rise up on the inside of you. Yes, he will. I said, he'll rise up on the inside of you. Yes, Jay said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to keep moving. That's right. Yes. Amen. So we move in. We lay on the mattress on the floor all night long because we didn't get everything moving. We kind of set up hurricanes going on in there. Calling my parents, they're getting flooded. That's flooding everywhere down in Eastern Carolina. So all our relatives are in the middle of the worst part of the hurricane. We're up here in the, in the rain bands. Get up the next morning, and I'm in mean, about 9 o'clock, I got a phone call. The see the company pulled something, they showed like a bankruptcy or something in their thing, but they had taken care of it. And the, the woman found the paperwork and faxed it over, and they funded the loan. That we, now he, he, wanted my, he didn't want me to have that house to start with. You ever know, in my neighborhood knows who I am? I'll stop and people say, oh, 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 we know new people come in. And just new people. Where are you? I'll live in the White House. Oh, the preacher. <laughs> There's 180 houses in our neighborhood. And it don't matter. The White House is the preacher. <laughs> they know who we are. Really? How long have you been living in this neighborhood? Oh, we just moved in. Preacher lives over there. Praise the Lord. Right. Well, he's come back for him. He ain't going to get it. That's right. And he's not taking the church down in the process of trying to get it. Amen. 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 We're headed not to tell. That's right. God's going to do things. God is in the midst of doing things we can't even fathom he would even do. Amen. Amen. There's a God that we serve. And his name is Elohim. His name is Jehovah. He's the great God Almighty. He's El Shaddai. Hallelujah. The God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. He's the all-sufficient God. He's the God in the midst of the storm who calms the seas. He's the God when there's not enough. Gives you more than more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then when you need to pay your taxes, he sends you fish and praise God. Pays yours and your neighbors. Hallelujah. He's the God who's the will within the will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he's Jacob's chariot. I'm telling you, Elijah's chariot. Boy, Elijah's chariot. Glory to God. Amen. He's our all in all. Hallelujah. When, you, when, when, the, when the storms of life come out against you, his spirit comes out and raises up a standard against it. Hallelujah. He's the I am that I am. Hallelujah. He's the great and mighty. Praise God. He's the one that when his breath hits the valley of dry bones, they begin to live and sinews and flesh come on them once again. Glory to God. He's the one who breathes out of his nostrils and the enemies are scattered this way and that way. Amen. He's the one that in the midst of your greatest battle with a strong and mighty arm, he brings you out. 
He establishes your comings and your goings. Hallelujah. He's the one that when you set your love on him, he says, I will honor you. I'll give you a long life. I'll satisfy you. And when all is said and done, he says, you tell them that I am, that I am has done this. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses said, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me to tell him all this? Now here's the thing. See, the Pharaohs wanted to project to the people that they were eternal. So when one pharaoh died, only the inner circle knew that he was dead. The next guy took over, was dressed just like it looked, and the people thought he was a god. So he thought he was, I am that I am. God said, you go tell him that the real I am. Now, do y'all know what the Hebrew actually says? <laughs> I love this. You go tell pharaoh that I exist because I exist since you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I exist because I exist. Just because I exist. That's what you want, but I got it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And he mocked every one of their gods into the ground. It was all done. Pharaoh said, go into the desert and worship your God. You're a winner. <laughs> yeah, I know every night. Forget it. Can't. No, no, can't. Christian Bell cannot pull off Moses. Like, what's his face did? Charles. Where's the Pharaoh? God is living in you with a resurrection life that makes you greater than anything you face. And I believe in some, and, and, and we've let go of some things, starting with me, just because of the attack and the attack and the attack and the attack. But we're getting a hold of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We're regaining our, our, our footing. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I'm telling you that you can you can be knocked down but not knocked out. That's right. Glory to God. Paul said, "I've been knocked down, but uh, little translation. I've been knocked down but not knocked out." Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You can feel like your feet where your head was two seconds before, you know, but we are like WWF wrestlers. <laughs> We're down on our last leg about to die, and we get a punch in, and another punch in, and then all of a sudden, we're, we're body dropping them, throwing them out of the air. You ever seen those crazy things? You know, the guy's down there, he's near about dead, and all of a sudden, he gets one little punch, and next thing you know, he's Hercules again. Hallelujah. Oh, I decree that once again we run. We run the race full of faith in the Holy Ghost. I decree that the Spirit of God comes fresh and new on each and every one of us. I decree that the power of the Holy Ghost infuses us. That the life of God in us is charged once again, glory be to God. I decree by the spirit of the living God that we will not walk in defeat, but walk in victory. Hallelujah. I decree that that which the Lord hath de declared over us, we shall not only see, we shall live in, experience, and take part in that which the Lord has declared over us. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are the mighty. Hallelujah. Because the greater one abides on the inside of us. And his resurrection life is lifting us up right now, praise God. And it's taking us out of the realm of defeat into the realm of victory. It's taking us out of the realm of, 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 of weariness and strengthening us once again with the strength of God. Hallelujah. And the race that is now set before us. We have strength. For the journey, glory to God, amen. to see it through to the end. Glory I declare yes. amen. Glory to God. that you will take and put your hand to the plow once again and never let go. And by the Spirit of God in you, you fall into line and you fall into your rank and you fall into your place. 
I say I'm equipped and ready for the battle and we go forward in the name of Jesus I decree from the realm of the spirits that that which has been thus ordained from the foundations of the world in relation to this church and the congregants of this church and those that are to be a part of this will be fulfilled and carried forth in the purpose and plan of God as he designed it from the beginning in Jesus' name. Money will no longer be an issue as we demand money come. We demand tithers come. Givers come. We, we say that's, this is the end of that battle in Jesus' name. Lord, release the wealth into our hands to carry forth the purpose. Now, let me, let me say this as we're saying this. When all is said and done, no one will be able to say anything other than the Lord did this. No man will be able to take glory. Because we know where we are. But where we are is not where we're staying. Amen. And where we are is not where we're going to be. Yes, yes. And where we are is now a thing of the past. Yes. For our future is bright. Our future is blessed. Our future is anointed by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree. Yes. Even take the word that Dr. Thompson brought and say, we say, bye-bye chickens. Bye-bye chickens. Bye -bye chickens. Bye -bye chickens. We're not pecking in the yard anymore. We're going to soar. Yes. Amen. We're going to be like eagles. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Lord, we, we, we just walk... We walk in freedom and liberty in your purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. We might be amateurs, but it's better to obey God and listen to your critics. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's all stand up. How'd you get where you, I don't know how I got where I was going here today. Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise God. Amen. We're going we're gonna to do what God called us to do. There are things to be done and wrought in the Spirit. There are, there are people to heal. People, I, I, my pastor, um, I, I kind of claim two pastors, pastors Pastor Hagen, but also Pastor Zabowski. He's always been a mentor for us. Although he's only a year older than me, he's been a, a mentor just because he walked in. See, it's the anointing. The anointing is what makes the difference. Yes. They can be a year older than you, and you can be, you know, equals in the fact of age and ministry experience. They still have wisdom beyond their years. He does. We recognize that. Yes. Amen. Oh Hallelujah. He's teaching a series on, on, you know, I love you, you love me. He said something in a Facebook post this week about his upcoming sermon. He says, we minister to people because we love Jesus, not because we love the people. I thought, wow, that's good. See, because you do it because you love people, they'll hurt you and you'll become discouraged. Amen. If you do it because you love Jesus and that's what he's asking you to do, you'll keep doing it even when they hurt you. Amen. So why do you think we're still here? Because we love Jesus. Amen. He told me to come, so I'm obeying him. I love him. Amen. People hurt us. People have done stuff to us. But we, we keep going because we love Jesus. Amen. He said, Go. So I went. And he told me to leave. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. We, 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 we see the fulfillment of the calling manifest. Brought pass. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to say this. Now we can have some things on the table with our with our the people who own the own business part. I believe they're serious they said I don't because honestly if, if, they, if they thought we were crazy they would have just said no. Yeah. So I know they're considering it. 
So I want you to be in agreement with us that we have divine favor with them. That everything we ask for, we get. Now, if not, then God's got a better place for us at a better rate, and we still get, get forgiven all the debt. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. We, we put it, they, actually, they came to us. And, and the, uh, my, our business partner's boss started throwing all these things on the table. And I walked out and said, Jane, they said this, this, and she said, well, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to ask for this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not the only reason. He was, he's, he's you know, the next guy at the line. And he started throwing out, what can we do to keep you here? I'm thinking, how can you make a meeting with us? We're this far behind on our lease. And then say, how can we keep you here? <laughs> and he's the one that threw out there, and what about if we forgive the lease? And I'm thinking, yeah. Really? <laughs> really? I said, we were paying so much money when we first moved down here. What, and, and brought that back down to what you were paying before. I'm like, really? I'm just sitting, sitting there kind of going. Thank you, Lord. You're on the other side of the table and kind of throw these offers out at us. So I took all these offers and put them all together. <laughs> Not just one or two of them. I took them all. Put in a letter and say, here's, right, here's our proposal. I don't, think, I don't think he was speaking by himself. I think the Holy Ghost said, here, say this. Say that. And then I got on paper and said, yeah, I like that, and I like that. So if you've kind of gotten weary in your mind, saying, oh, this looks like it's, it's not going down. It's getting, and we're getting a Holy Ghost recharge. Yeah, yeah. We're going to step it back up. Hallelujah. You're going to be excited about your church again. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. You're going to go tell people about our church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's amazing what one event in, in your life can change. Oh, there he is. I was going to say, ask Nathan what happened just a, a month and a half ago. Met one little girl. His whole life has totally changed. I mean, he's so, he just, shut up. Now, my pastor flew him to Florida, gave him the check to give to me when he got back. And so I finally said, Nathan, yes, I said, I haven't gotten the check yet, son. You, you need to kind of check with them and find out what's going on. And so I get this text from Pastor John saying, hey, Emily says to her dad, Dad, you kind of forgot to give Nathan a check. He says, no, Mom gave it to him in Florida. <laughs> Tell him to check his wallet. <laughs> Next thing he goes back, he goes, we got it. <laughs> he's just, oh, she says, he's all shook up. I need the check, and he's all shook up. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, you can have an event with God that'll just get you all shook up yeah. and stirred up. And life be so wonderful, hallelujah. He, I, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm telling that because, you see, he's just all caught up with her, so caught up with her, he can't think about anything else. And so you can get so, you can get so tired of the, of, of the rut of life that you forget to get caught up with God. You need to get so caught up with God that it's like the old song we used to sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. I got the guy in the wrong place. But anyway, you got the song. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. He gets and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. What happens to a lot of people? They get tired. And Jesus said, you've left your first love. You've been coming to church, you've been prophesying, you've been giving, but you're not in love with me anymore. So you're going through the motions. Let's stop doing the church motion and get on fire for God again. That our, that our church is a place that we bring people. We come excited. Amen. We don't come weary. We come excited. Because you know, we're a church on fire and something good is going on around here. Yes. Yes. Amen. But you've got to make that happen. That's right. 
you got to be filled with the life of God and fired up for God. I know we're running late. That's all right. I know we got a wedding shower this afternoon at 5 o'clock, and that's all right. It's all well. The word of the Lord has been spoken by the Spirit of God. And those things which the enemy says wouldn't happen will happen. Don't be like the nation of Israel that when Messiah came, they couldn't even recognize him. The Pharisees had all the furniture of the temple laid out. If you take an overview, it makes a cross. And when he came, they couldn't see him. Because they were so caught up in just going through the root routine. No more routine. No more routine. Amen. I said no more routine. Amen. 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 We're a church on fire. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We call you blessed. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.